that part. All right. So how's everybody today? Good, good. All right. And so the message for today is enough of the bad news. Oh, my gosh, right? Uh, I mean, we just been... Um, I mean, every time you hear the news or you watch the news or anything like that, you know, we start to hear all these, uh, you know, things going on in the world and everything like that. So, yeah, you know, so today, um, as I was looking over the last few weeks, I guess I can take this off, right? As we were looking at the last few weeks, I was wondering, what, what kind of a message do we need to give? What kind of a, uh, you know, what's going to be like... The last, the last sermon series was what's next, right? So what's going to be next? So <laughs> what's the next steps? And so how do we continue with uh, knowing not just, um, not just about what's the next steps and where we are in our life and what God want, needs us to do, um, whether it's to know him or all that kind of stuff, but then how do we stay positive in the middle of everything that's going on, right? Uh, with, uh, you know, you just hear the news and, and, and you know, uh, you hear people jobs vanishing or uh, people dying. Uh, the economy is struggling. You know, it's trying to bounce back, but then you know it doesn't. And then uh, you know the nation is divided right now. You have all the looters and all these people that are destroying our our neighborhoods for no reason at all. Um, don't get me wrong; they can they they have they have something that they can say, but they don't have to be destroying businesses. So um, you know all these types of things that uh, that. Or, or destroying communities, um, you know, protest, but do it peacefully. Uh, I can't say that enough. Um, everybody has a right to say their voice, and everybody has a right to be heard, but nobody has a right to destroy anybody's businesses or beat up anybody just because they are, they are on the opposite side, right? And so, um, thank you. Let's, can I get an amen? amen? So, all these things are going on in the news, and oh my gosh, it's just, you know, it's easily to be sucked into it, right? You it's, it's unsettling for us sometimes, you know, we're, we're trying to stay positive, we, 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 we come out of, a, uh, you know, things going on, and, and, we, and we, we want to we stay with a positive mind, but then sometimes, you know, everything that's going on just sucks us in, right? It just, you know, it, it discourages us. But, but, um, the thing is that I want today is I want to be able to show you that we can have op that we can be optimistic about the future, right? And so, um, uh, you know, and, and, and if you know, if I can just be transparent, um, there's times where I know, you know, uh, there's people that will tell me, uh, with even within my own family, it's like they'll tell me, well, um, does anything really impact you? <laughs> um, because I always have like a I always have like a face that's um, I don't know, I guess. I have a face that I guess I don't like to worry anybody else, so or I don't like to make them feel like, oh, you know, well, what's going on, um, and so I guess I keep it inside, right? But there's times where I even like I feel discouraged, you know, with everything that's going on, uh, and 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 how do I, you know, what message do I bring? How can I, gosh, you know, how can I um, stay positive to my congregation and then also move myself forward, right? So how can I do those types of things? And so um, how can we ever rebuild this, right? We were, we were just starting up our uh, ministries and things going here at the church, and all of a sudden COVID hits, and then we can't do those things. And so, you know, what do I do? What do I do? So, um, so in those times, um, you know, I was talking to the kids one time. Of course, they're not kids anymore, right? But uh, to us, they're always our kids, right? <laughs> and so one time we were at the house, and we're just talking and, and saying, oh, well, what do you guys think that we were just kind of talking like what do you think is going to be positive that comes out of all this stuff right so uh so you know the kids start sharing you know things like uh well um you know uh some of the things that happened in the pandemic is that you know we started to see that all these satellite views of the earth uh the earth was getting greener right and so uh you know the environment was clearing up uh we started to see uh, this one report that in india for the first time from one town they could actually see the himalayan mountains for the first time in like 30 years. Uh, Los Angeles was the lowest uh, uh, pollution that they've had since the 1970s. So, um, you know, all these things we were talking about, that kind of stuff. And then I th one of the kids, and I can't remember who it was, shared that they saw in a meme that uh, the meme was saying like, 
oh, well, what I'm going to tell my kids when, when we grow up, and then my, the moment that my kid starts to complain about you can't go outside or you can't go somewhere, they say, well, when I was your age, they told us we had to be locked up for three months. What, no, six months now? It might be even eight months now. And if you go outside, you're going to die. Yeah, we can even be able to tell our kids that, right? And I was like, hmm, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. cool. Kind of like a new version of the, uh, I used to walk three miles to school and, you know, that sort of thing, you know, that they used to tell us, uphill and in the rain and with no shoes. Right. So, yeah, that's right. We ate dirt and we liked it. That's right. And that's why our immune systems are so good. Amen. But I also need, and during this time is, is how do I bring a message to, to you all? And how do we stay positive? And to look for the good in the middle of the bad and believe that God is still on the throne. He's still working and he can be in this and be with us and he's still for us. Amen? Amen. Uh, because of a negative outlook never ever leads to a positive life. Amen? A negative outlook never leads to a positive life. So what I want to do today is I just want to show you uh, in shape, an unshakable, that I'm unshakably optimistic for the future. Um, and, and in today's message, you know, uh, enough of the bad news, right? Enough of the bad news. And with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask today, Lord, that it be you that moves us in a way that we haven't been moved before. Lord, we ask for this every Sunday, Lord, so that for the week it gives us the strength to endure all the news and all the noise and to stay optimistic, Lord, of the future that you have for us, for you continue to work for the good of our future. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. All right. And so... Um, so whatever we're watching online and, you know, if anybody's with us, you know, if you're with us today, you know, just type that into the, into the uh, Facebook. If you're on, on, on Zoom or anything, just, just type amen. Amen. All right. And let us know that you're, you're, you're participating with us and you're here and, and stuff like that. So, um, and so why we, I'm shaped, I am unshakably optimistic of the future because enough of the bad news. And so uh, optimism is not... A denial of reality. It's not a denial of reality. Okay? It's all good, right? Uh, but it's not, it doesn't mean that you're, you're denying the reality. It doesn't mean that we're, we're being just walking blinded and saying, oh, well, yeah, I think that's going to happen. No, no, we understand that things happen, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be in denial of the reality of things that are going on. Optimism is not blind faith either. Okay? Optimism is not blind faith. It's not just something that we just say, uh, we can ignore or, or, or just say, you know, no, no, we're, we're, we're not living in this time. We're not living in this time. No, that's, that's not what it means. Optimism is the confidence. And so, you know, I started looking at some of the um, definitions online and things, and this is what came up. Optimism is confidence about the future or a successful outcome of a successful outcome, right? Or a successful outcome. And so that is what optimism is. Optimism is simply confidence about a successful outcome. It's believing in something good is coming. Or an insurance, a belief that it's going to be a positive or successful outcome, right? And so optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good, right? So I wanted to add some spiritual weight to it, right, to the definition. It's not just having a future successful outcome, but a spiritual weight of the optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. And so, in fact, this is what Paul said, the Apostle Paul, when he was writing the, the, the letter to the Romans in, uh, in Romans 8.28, he said, he said, and we know that all things, could somebody say all things? all things? 
Can you type that in the chat? Everybody on Facebook, you know, type all things, right? Uh, it might be the impossible boss. It might be your financial setback, uh, your annoying in-laws. Uh, don't elbow them if they're next to you watching this, right? Uh, I can't complain about my in-laws, so I just had to throw that in as a joke. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so, you know, the challenges of, and it could just be the challenges of trying to educate your kids while you're walking at home, right? So uh, all these things that, that, that are, they're, they're doing. So in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who's been called according to his purpose, right? Uh, our very own Daniel preached on this uh, in March for us. You know, he, he, that was his main verse. And uh, as a matter of fact, that was the only verse he read that, that day. Um, but he, he, he picked it apart and he, and he did a wonderful job. And so um, that, I wanted to kind of go back to that because, see, Romans... Um, it, it, you know, it, it, last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about David, right, and his purpose, right, and how uh, David uh, was a man that, that sought the, the, the heart of God. Well, in Paul, and the same thing in the book of Romans, he is, I mean, this, this book is a very meaty, meaty, meaty uh, letter, right, that he writes to the apostles. Um, and, and so, uh, right when he's getting to do that, um, he, he doesn't always, in the book of Romans, he's not always this optimistic, right? Uh, there's times in the book, in the beginning, there's some chapters where he's really struggling. I mean, he's really, uh, he, he's, he's down on himself, he's, he's you know, and, and things of that nature. And so, um, so we have to kind of build up to it, you know, right? Uh, if you can get past the first four chapters of Romans, um, you're going to be good, I promise you. <laughs> um, because the first four chapters is, is like, we are nothing we're not worthy we're you know uh we're sinners and we're not going to be worth anything and we're, we don't we don't deserve the glory of god and all this kinds of stuff but then then paul gets into it and he and he gets good he gets really good um and so um one of the things that we want to look at is because what consumes our mind tends to control your life right what consumes your mind tends to control your life. So whatever you think about tends to direct your life. And in other words, that life that you have is generally a reflection of the thoughts that you think. Right? Think about it. So Proverbs tells us this, you know, Proverbs tells us that a man or a person thinks in his heart, so he becomes, right? So whatever he thinks in his heart, he becomes. And so Proverbs tells us these things. Uh, so your life is generally moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And so if you tend to think of the world as always in trouble, you can't trust anybody, uh, you know, you hate your circumstances, you know, um, things of that nature. Uh, wow, this, this is the... You know, instead of like waking up in the morning and say, wow, this is the best day ever, waking up on a positive note, right? Uh, you know, those types of things. What consumes your thoughts controls your life. And that's why the quality of your life will exceed the quality of your thoughts. Let me read that again. The quality of your life will exceed the quality of your thoughts, right? So, um, so I want you to pause here. And I want you to think about what you think about. This is the one, one of the problems of pessimism, right? Uh, pessimism is, you know, when somebody's pessimist, they, they think that, oh, it's never going to be good. You know, it's always my fault. I'm never going to be worthy, things of that nature. So, uh, but, but that's not the way we need to be thinking, right? Because then it gets worse and worse. And before long, we start to live that very victim mentality. The, the economy's bad and, you know, and all this kinds of stuff and the virus. And, and so here's what we have to recognize, that being content and being satisfied and being blessed, being optimistic, if it isn't a, it's not a state of affairs, it's a state of mind, right? That being satisfied, being blessed, being optimistic, is, it's not a state of affairs, but it's a state of mind. What controls your mind controls your life. What consumes your thoughts, right? What consumes your thoughts? 
Are you typically drifting towards faith in God and, op and optimism and belief of his power and his goodness involved in your life? Or do they tend to drift towards the negative? I'm just concerned. I'm worried. The world's falling apart. If you move towards negative, because by nature, sometimes we tend to do that, right? We tend to move in a negative direction sometimes. So what I want to do today is I want to be able to show you that in order for us to move in that direction of optimism, we have to feed our faith and starve our fears. We need to feed our faith and starve our fears. Why? Because we tend to do, you know, whatever we feed, what? Whatever we feed, what? Grows, right? And whatever we starve tends to what? Die. That's right. So we want to feed our faith and starve our fears. Why? Because, you know, again, we don't want to be able to feed the things that take, that take us away from the good things of, that Jesus has for us, right? For the, the future that God has for us. And if I've got a negative voices all around me, uh, you know, what am I going to do? What is, what's, what's, uh, you know, do I have to social distance? Do we have to wear a mask for the rest of our lives? You know, you know that type of thing. We have to be careful, right? We have to be careful. We wear our masks. Why? Because somebody might be vulnerable. We're careful because we want to be able to do what? We want to be able to be here again, right? And continue. And so, um, so I want to take you through what I do is um, uh, I tend to, you know, I was telling you last week that what I tend to do is I, I, I dive into scripture or, or worship music or, or, you know, I start to um, look at sermons and things of that nature so, and, and fast. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to take you through Romans, uh, a little bit of Romans. So, um, of course, uh, Peter, I mean, Paul was trying to write this meaty letter, right, to the Romans. And so if before we get to, to read more about Romans 8, you know, we want to make sure that when we're diving into Scripture, that we understand the context of the, of the verse, right? Uh, we can't be just pulling out verses and pulling them, out, pulling them out of context just to pull them out of my context. Hey, this one sounds good. You know, I'm going to slap this on a T-shirt and put it on a cup and, and let's go with it, right? So what we want to do is, is, before we get to Romans 8, we want to think, okay, who was Paul writing to? And what was going on? Yeah, and I know that 8 is after 7, right? Right? Normally in math. <laughs> so you want to go back to Romans 7 and figure out what was going on in Romans 7. You know, what, why, what's Paul building up to? Why is he getting to this point, Right? And so I love, uh, I, I actually like Romans 7, even though it's, it's a tough chapter to read because Paul is all over the place. He's a mess. Let's, let's just say it. He's a mess. You know, he's saying that I'm not worthy. You know, I, 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 the things that I want to do, I don't do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. And all these types of things, right? But then he switches. He turns on a dime, right? And he says, in the very first verse, he says, Therefore now, therefore now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ, there's no judgment for your sins. Your sins have been forgiven. And he makes a hard turn as he, you know, he starts to you know, new, renew his mind. He talks about... Uh, the things of the flesh and how, you know, we, we, not, we must not pay attention to the things of the flesh. And he goes on, and then I land on Romans 8.18. 8, Romans 8.18 8, says, where there, is, where there is what? Paul says, I consider myself, uh, wait a minute. Oh, yes, okay, so, Sorry. My notes have it differently. <laughs> so I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. And it's 
sit there for a little bit. And I'm just going to stop there and consider the present sufferings, all these things that we hate and that we're enduring that are so incredibly painful and our present suffering are not worthy. They're not worth comparing to the glory that God's going to bring, right? And isn't that optimistic? Isn't that a wonderful promise that the things that we go through right now are only temporary? We're only in the wilderness. We're walking through. Remember what Psalms 23 says? It's just walking through. As we walk through the valley, as we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, right? We're not, we're not going to stay there. We're just passing through. And so I want to feed my faith. I want to starve my fears. Some of you are worried that you're sick, that there's things going on. You know, and, and so... Um, let's look at let's look at that example of Paul for a little bit let me pause here for a little bit this scripture right here he says I consider that my present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that revealed in us remember this is Paul saying this who was Paul what did he suffer well he was in prison multiple times that's kind of worse than what we're going through right now, right? He was imprisoned. Five times he was beaten with 40 lashes. That's pretty bad. Three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned. And not for entertainment purposes, I might add. Just wanted to throw in there. <laughs> you know, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't do that. You know, he was, he, was, uh, he, was, he was stoned. There was rocks that were thrown at him. He was shipwrecked. He spent the night out at sea. Could you imagine holding on to your life on a log at sea? Wouldn't that, isn't that horrible? I would hate to do that. The guy was left for dead on the side of the road. He was just left there. Didn't even look like he was alive. And this is Paul writing this, that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory of God that's going to be revealed in us. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. So, what troubles you? What's on your mind? Now, the things that you go through right now are the things that will build you stronger for later. That the struggle I'm in today is producing the strength that I need tomorrow. The strength that I need tomorrow. Right? It's not even worth comparing this momentary trial, this struggle that we're going through. It's, it's not even worth comparing. Why? Because I've got an unwavering expectation that our God, our loving God, is working in every situation for our future good. So I starve my fears and I feed my faith. I let God's word start to renew my mind because my life is always moving in the direction of my strongest thoughts, right? So I read on and I get to Romans 8.26. And in Romans 8.26, it says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness, right? And so... Um, and, and, and that, that's a thing that, that, that sometimes during the week, like, how, what do I preach in the, in the middle of the week? And, and, and so I second-guess myself all the time. I'm always doubting, you know, is this the right message? Oh, God, you know, um, am, I even, am I even touching anybody's heart? Is, is your, and see, and, and that's the mistake, is that I start to think that it's me. When it's the Spirit. And I should have confidence and faith that what the Spirit moves in my heart to bring on Sunday is His message. That the dreams and the visions that I have are His. 
And I need to trust that. So I start to, then I start to think and I start to pray and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for renewing my strength. Thank you for letting me know that it comes from you. So I feed my faith and I starve my fears. I feed my faith and I starve my fears, right? And then we get to Romans 8, 28. And I let it sink in. For we know that in all things, in all things, in all things, in all things, the, in the good and in the bad, the heartbreaks and the inconveniences, in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. He is that good. He is that good. He is an involved God. He's in our hearts. He's in our minds. He will never forsake us. He will never lead us. He's always working for our good. No matter what situation you're in, He's always there. He's always there. Amen? And you know what? And it starts to make me think about snail catcher guy. Snail catcher guy. Come on, think. Where have you seen in a movie a guy that catches a snail? Hmm. In Pretty Woman, there, he, she gets invited, the main character gets invited by the rich guy, right? To this really expensive restaurant. And so she doesn't even know what it is that she has on her plate, right? And there's this scene in the movie where she's like looking like this and she doesn't even know what to use, what fork or what, you know, special thing to break the snails. And the, the, the rich guy tells her, oh, it's escargot. It's really good. You'll like it. And he knows over here, he's over here doing this business deal. And she was just kind of like a trophy, trophy date or whatever. And so she's trying to figure this out. And then so she gets, she gets the, the little device that to, to break the snail, right? And she goes, <laughs> and that thing just shoots out like a rocket, right? Goes right over the guy's head. And then snail catcher guy comes out of nowhere like Superman. <laughs> you know, superhuman reflections and just goes, <laughs> And he says, don't worry, man. This happens all the time. <laughs> Isn't that a perfect image of an invisible God that's there? I mean, work with me here, right? You know, say, I, <laughs> you know, work with me here. But I like to think that that's how God is, is that he's there in the shadows in the back, just looking. And then when we need him, pow, superhuman reflections, right? And he tells us, don't worry. It happens all the time. Doesn't he do that? Our God is always there. So when our snail goes out of our hand, he catches it. When we lose faith, when we feel like we can't do anything anymore, he's there. He never leaves us. He comes out of the shadows, boom, and he catches it, right? And he renews our strength. So I'm looking a lot, and I want to go back. You know, a lot of us are saying that we want to go back to normal. Back to normal. You know what? And I'm remembering a lot of you were complaining about your life just six months ago, right? And you want to go back to that? Well, I say I have more optimism and I have more faith that we're going to go back to something better because we have a God that works in us and brings things that are better. We're going to go to something better. Amen? Because we have a God that does exceedingly and abundantly better to the glory of His power, to the glory of His will. And then I get to Romans 8, 38, 39, where Paul says, For I am convinced that there is and there's an unshakable assurance with everything in my soul, I believe that this is to be true. For I am completely convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, Lord. Can I get an amen? Let me tell you, nothing that we can do, nothing in this world will separate us from the love of God. Amen? Preach it, teach it. <laughs> Nothing will separate us 
from the love of God. Because that is the type of God that we have. So I starve my fears and I feed my faith. And I lift up my hands and I tell you that I have an unwavering confidence that a very good, very involved, very loving God is working in every situation in your life right now to bring out a future of good for all his glory because that's how God and how good God is. Because that's how good he is. I'm going to stop there. But God is a good God. So if you're anxious in your anxiety, God is your peace. When you feel weak, He is your strength. Because He is a God who works in all things for the good of our future. Amen? And so, Father, I pray today that Lord, I ask that you lift us up, Lord. I ask that you allow us to continue to see you present in our lives. Lord, that you give us that wisdom to know that we have you in our minds, Lord, through dreams and through visions, Lord. But that you work in all things, in all things, in all things. You work for the good of those who love you and are here to serve your purpose. And so, Father, today we just ask that you be with those that are, if, if, you know, as we continue to pray, if you're there and you need God's forgiveness and you need him in your life and you need him to strengthen you and your wisdom, can we lift up your hands right now and just lift up your hands where you are? If you need his strength in your weakness, lift up your hands. Father, I ask that you lift up these people, Lord, that we know that they need you, Lord. We know that they need your strength, Lord. They need your spirit. They need you during the week, Lord, and every day. Heavenly Father, I ask that you give them the strength to endure, to know that everything they're suffering, the things that they're going through right now are not even worth comparing to the grace and the glory that you will bestow upon them in the future, Lord, that you will build them up, that you will strengthen them, Lord, that you will make them bolder and bolder than they have ever been before. For we know that you have our future in your hands. And so those that, let us pray together and say this together. Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Jesus, save me. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you and show your love in all that I do. My life is not my own. I give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Can we get a hand clap to those? Amen. And so, as we play this song, if you need prayer, please put your prayer request there on, 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 uh, on Facebook. Um,